Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Friday, April 26th, 2024. And in this video, I'm going to be replacing and tensioning the V-belts. I'm sure you've all tensioned your V-belts, but I might give you a tip or two in this video, so stay tuned and watch this video. Another reason why you wanna watch this video is because I'm announcing right now that at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Arizona time, I'm going to stream live for the first time on YouTube. Yeah, I know, this is Tony Live TV and all that kind of stuff, and I've never gone live, but tomorrow I'm going to attempt that. Um, I have yet to actually even try to do that yet, and those who have been following me know that I've had to build a computer recently, so I built the computer, installing all the software, learning what it's all about and all that, and trying to get it all done by tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time. So I want to get back to that, and for now, why don't you go ahead and watch this video, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. The U.S. version of the 560 SL has a total of five belts, and the way that Mercedes did it is that the most important belts are the inner belts, so the power steering and water pump actually are the innermost belts and it's two belts for that, and here's the part number for these two belts. Most of you are gonna have your fan in here and your radiator and all that. Uh, lucky for me, I don't have a radiator in here, but I placed the fan in here to show you that you can obviously still put it on and take them off with the fan on it, and to me, the easiest way that I found is by catching a certain side here and then roll it and roll it on. See how I roll it right onto there like that? So I'm gonna take this off. It's a 10 millimeter. When you go to put these back on, it'll be 25 Newton meters. And there we go. You get them on the right. Pulleys, that's probably the hardest thing, right, is to make sure to just get it on the right pulleys. There, once you get that one side there, I like the water pump you can't move, the crankshaft you can't move, so those are the things I try to put on first. But when I get over to here, now I need to get that over to there, so that's all I do is just roll it on over. You guys do it. You've done it a million times, right? I want to show you that how important this next step is. And it's the most important step. And that is to get these to line up perfectly. And you notice it's this way, so a guy can just read it, right? He doesn't have to get his flashlight out. He don't have to figure this out, that out. You've done it for him, because you were a good guy. Get these to line up perfectly. Otherwise, it's not a good thing. Made in Germany. Now, if you guys want to know how to tighten it and all that, then go ahead and skip forward. I'm, I'm going to keep all this open because I can't really do this properly without putting the fan on because it would make the pulley wobble. If this is all you want and you want to know how to tension this properly, go ahead and skip forward to tensioning the belts. Next is this belt, which goes to the alternator. So now you see why I don't want the fan in here. You know, it's not that I'm lazy or anything. Not only do I want you guys to get some good views, but it makes this whole thing a heck of a lot easier. Could you imagine trying to get this and getting around this and down in here and into this loop right here? Could you imagine doing that? It's hard enough doing it right here. This next part is super, super, super important. Let me get this in the right groove. There we go. You have to get this here, just like this, on that pulley. Just like what you say? Well, you want these, these here to be up, your, your markings, and facing you. And if you do that on every one of the belts, and if you have everything properly adjusted, and it's at an idle, it'll synchronize perfectly to the white album of Lev Zeppelin. 
Next is the AC compressor. It's a little bit wider than the others. Same thing, make sure you get these markings right where you want them. Uh, go ahead and just, you know, lax in your, your tensioner all the way just to make it easy. <laughs> but you see why you don't want your fan in here, really. You know, these two belts are the first belts to go on, but they're the last belts that you would tension. I've already tightened this main crank bolt. That was something else, I'll tell you. All right. And finally, the air pump. You'll notice this is the smallest. So it goes from the biggest belts to the smallest belts. Again, make sure you get your things all lined up so you can enjoy that Led Zeppelin album. Instead of putting this belt on, for me, I'm not going to install this air pump belt or the AC belt. There's two reasons for that. Number one, I'm going to be doing a first start. So I want the least amount of friction on that first start. You know, it's required for the water pump to be on and the alternator to be operational on a first start. But the other things are not necessary. And also on my AC side, I don't have the AC system uh, closed up yet. So I don't wanna just have my pump accidentally turning on or even having the bearings spin, right? Cause it's gonna spin on this. So instead of that, for this video, I am not going to install this belt. All right, so the air pump is not going to be installed and neither is the AC. But what I'll show you is how to tension it. Right there is that bolt and it's a double-sided bolt. And in that bolt, you put a 10 millimeter. Well, first you start off with a 19 millimeter. Put that on that bigger nut there and then take your 13 millimeter and loosen that locking nut. And you can get your old belt off and then you'll tension it using that same method. And I'll show you how to tension using a belt that's a little bit easier than that belt. Instead, I wanna use this belt here to show you how I tension it will be with this one. Now moving on to the AC, this is your locking bolt and there's a couple of ways you can do it. I, you know, they made it so you can put a 10 millimeter hex in there or a 17 millimeter open end like that. After you've got your belt off and your new belt on to tighten it, go ahead and put this on here. And then an eight millimeter on the outside right here. And then you can use a wrench or whatever you want, you know, to pull up your tension because that's what you're doing is pulling that and getting the tension on it. And when you feel you got it about right, go ahead and lock it down and then go ahead and test your tension, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do over here with this belt. That's what we'll do next. The first thing, regardless of what it is that you're tensioning, regardless what belt, is understanding all the pivot points. So you've got this here, is a pivot point actually. It's a mount where this thing swings on. This is a pivot point because this brace moves as you tighten or loosen the belt using this special nut. And what a lot of guys do is they jump onto this nut right here. Now this is a 17 millimeter, so you'll need a 17 millimeter. And they just get on this thing and start to crank it, forgetting that on the back side is a 16 millimeter that you first have to loosen. This is just to help you scale your tension back and forth, all right? These need to be slightly loosened, your pivot points, just to make it easier for everything to work. And then once you got it there, you, you, you these are snug though. You don't want them loose, like right now mine are loose because they're brand new. I haven't put anything, anything in it. 
but I'm going to snug these up a little bit and then I will loosen this one here which is already kind of loose I think and then I can use this one here the 17 millimeter like I said to walk up and when I do it tightens this belt right there make sure that you have enough tension on there because if this thing slips out a little bit you're going to you're going to break your teeth so on the alternator you've got this 16 millimeter so you want to crack that to make sure it's you know just barely crack it and then on here is a 13 on each side so you'll hold your nut on the other side with the 13 and I've already done this and then do the same thing down here is a 16 on the back side here so you use a 16 millimeter after you've loosened this back nut, and it should be easy, guys. See how easy that is for me to walk that up? Right, or down? That, so you should not be ruining your nut here. That's an expensive nut. I had to replace mine because the last guy overdid it. But you kind of, you'll, you'll have to get a feel for it. And then, you know, when you think you've got it, you can, you know, go on the back side here and then snug it down. So now you say, how do I know, you know, how, how tight, you know, the chain on my bicycle, right? You remember that, guys? How would how'd you check that? So the first method I'm going to show you is an old school method that I've used my entire life. And I can't remember who taught that to me. Maybe my dad, you know, so uh, you got to remember belts is what started everything, right? Everything was run by belts in the very beginning, so they didn't have any of these special tools. So how do you know? In this case, it's one pulley going to one pulley, so it doesn't matter. This is my longest point. And what you do is you, when you get it snugged up, feel where it is, then you take this and you turn it. 90, if I can go over 90, I'm not tight enough. So I need to continue. Try that again. I can still go past it. Test that again. That feels about right. But the manual says for the alternator that there's a special tool that you can use and it measures the tension. And in this case, that measurement is between 30 and 35. That special tool is this special tool. And these are the kgs that they're talking about right here and what happens is that this gets depressed and then goes up and then you read where in that scale as you can see as it goes up that scale where within that scale it happens so that's why you push that down and the, but you know you'd say well geez yeah every time i can always do that that's no tension well, it's got a couple of different things to it. So there's a flat side here. There's also a ridge right here. So you put this ridge up against the belt like that. And you have your finger in here. This is flexible. So you put your finger in here like this. And then you have this up against the belt and this flat on that belt right here. And then you push down and then when you push down, the belt will flex and, and it will click just like a torque wrench. I'll show you. All right, so I push this all the way down, put it on the belt, up against the rail, and then you push. Now listen, you hear it click? Now we're gonna read this rating 
If you look at that, it's sitting at 35. Can you tell? It's where it cross sections there. That belt is exactly as I told you. It stops right there. Okay, that 90 degrees, so it doesn't even matter what size the belt is, it really doesn't, or how long or anything, just find that longest point, put your special tool on there, right, get it right in between there, just like I did before, and push. And then look at your reading. Can you see that? That is like 35, like on the money, you guys. So you either buy one of these tools, which is cool, right? It's cool. But that old school method, it works every time. It really does. And the whole purpose behind this is that if you have it too tight, you guys, then you're going to be pulling tension on this because that crankshaft isn't going to move. But if you have this too tight, then you're going to put too much tension on this bearing and you're gonna wear it out, the armature, you're gonna wear the whole thing out prematurely. So that's the whole purpose behind getting proper tension on your belts. All right, so now you know how to tension the belt. I finished this on the alternator, it's complete. It's all now, I'll just uh, finish tightening up these ones right here. Like I said, that's a 16, that's good. And now the 13 on each side here. Now I'm going to show you the only other one that needs explanation, and that is the power steering unit. Before I start tensioning the belts, you should first make sure that you understand what you're working with and how many points need to slide up and down. On this side here, these are the two main ones. You've got this little hex one right here. This is a six millimeter hex. And then that goes down to a shaft and you can see that plastic bushing down there. And that just slides up and down in a groove, but it can't slide up and down unless you go ahead and loosen the nut that's down here. You can see where it slides up and down in this groove right here. But besides that, you've also got this one and that one down there. To get to the one on the bottom, it's 13 millimeter. Actually, the bottom and the top one both are 13 millimeter. But I have a wobble, and that works great for the one on the bottom. No problem. And like I said, I have it loose. So you just have to crack it just to make sure that there's no extra friction. So then that's loosened. The one on top, you can either use a 13 millimeter open or boxed in, either one you want to do it, or a crow's foot. And that will work as well. No problem. But those are all the points that need to be loosened up. Once you have it loosened up, you can loosen and push down on your pump and take the belts off. Then go ahead and you can start cranking it like that to tighten it. Once you get it where you want it, snug up that bottom one down there. Either, you know, again, you can use an open end or use the wobble. It's 13 millimeters. It's all the same, and we've already talked about the belts, but there is a difference on these belts. So the difference here is that you're dealing with two belts. This is why I really like the twist method, because I can kind of get it really, really close using the twist method, regardless if I use one of these tools or not. You know, I can do the twist method on each one of them, and and um, to me, that's good enough. <laughs> you don't need one of these, but otherwise, you do that, make sure they have equal tension. If you're twisting one over and the other one you can't twist over, 
well, then you probably have a problem. You probably have a stretch belt, you know, and this here will certainly tell you just how much stretch there is in a sense, as far as how much it takes. But at that point, you know, replace them, you know, so just get to your chart and then just measure it. If it's not within the tolerances, you know, I definitely would just change them. I mean, they're only like $15, $17 maybe, something like that at the most. All right, you guys, I can't wait to see you uh, tomorrow morning. Looks like that's when we're gonna go live. So uh, as far as the belts go, that's how I do it. I start from, you know, well, if I was taking it off, obviously I start from the outside and work my way in to whatever belt it is that I'm removing and then work my way out. But the setting of this, the way that I like to do it is I go all the way on, take the stupid fan off. To me, it's worth it. You might as well start with your, your back ones. Do not tension it. Come all the way out and finish all your belts and then, and then do it, tension it from here back, you know, to the engine. So in other words, you start at the air pump because then you're gonna be pulling this way. And then you're gonna go over to the AC and now you're pulling that way. So that's a pair, all right? And then the same thing, you've got your alternator pulling this way. And then you've got your power steering and water pump. You know, that's how I like to do it. So that way there I'm kind of equalizing my way to my tension. So, well, that's it. I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow. In the meantime, thanks again for watching.